Hey there students, uh, welcome to part one of the Geometry Regions exam for January 2013. In this installment, we are going to be going over questions one to five. All right, let's take a look at question number one. It says, if triangle MNP is congruent to triangle VWX and PM is the shortest side of triangle MNP, what is the shortest side of triangle VWX? So you can draw um, the shape of the two triangles and then since they're congruent, then corresponding sides will be congruent. Or you can simply use the order of the letters that represents the vertices uh, to determine which side corresponds to PM. Okay? So in the first triangle, PM, uh, in triangle MNP, PM is the shortest side. Okay? So let's see the order here. In triangle MNP, let's write it over here, triangle MNP, side PM. How do we achieve side PM? You look at the, you, the order is you go from the last alphabet, P, straight to the first one. Okay? So that's how you set it up. Now, now if we follow the same uh, order, going from the last alphabet to the first in the second triangle, then we'll find a sign that corresponds to PM, which is also congruent to PM. Okay? So in the second triangle, it is triangle uh, v, W, X. Now we'll follow the same order from last to first. If we go from last to first, we're going to have segment X as the last one and V as the first one. So guess what? These two sides correspond, and since these triangles are congruent, corresponding sides are congruent. So our answer is simply option number one. All right, so in this problem, you don't actually have to draw the triangle. Just follow the order of the letters, and that should tell you which sides correspond to which. Okay? All right, so let me show you another example. So this is one, this is one, uh, from, uh, one pair of sides that are congruent. How about I pick side MN? Side MN from the first triangle is congruent to what in the second triangle? So this is congruent to that. So side MN, how do you get MN? I'm just, MN, you go from the first to the second. So if I do the same on the second triangle, first letter to the second letter, I'm going to have find out that MN is congruent to VW, to segment VW. So if you follow the order of the letters, that's how you basically get it. Again, the last set, if you go NP, NP is congruent to WX, all right? So you have NP, segment NP is congruent to, uh, is congruent to segment WX. All right, so you just basically keep track of the order of the letters. Let me change this. It's not a, it's not a raise a side. Keep track of the order of the letters, then um, you don't have to actually draw the triangle to determine which side is congruent to which. All right, so we have SSS, which is a condition for two triangles to be congruent. All right, so we can clearly see that our answer is option one. Okay, let's move on to question number two. Uh, it says in the, in the circle shown, in circle, all shown in the diagram below, cores A, B, and C, D are parallel. Uh, if a measure of angle A, a measure of arc A, B is 104 degrees, a measure of arc M, C, D is 168 degrees, what is the measure of arc B, D? Question mark. All right, since, this, since A, B is parallel to C, D, now what does that tell us? Well, anytime you have two parallel uh, lines, in um, cutting through a circle, they cut out congruent arcs. So basically, this arc right here is congruent to this arc right here. Okay, so um, measure of arc AC is congruent to measure of arc BD. Right, so that's one fact we're going to keep in mind, and we're going to use this to finish the problem up. Okay. So measure of our AC is congruent to measure of our BD. Now, the question is as follows. What is the sum of angles around a circle? Full circle is 360 degrees, right? So when I uh, subtract these two angles from 360, I'll get these two AC and BD will be left, okay? Because uh, I know that um, um, AB plus BD plus DC plus CA all add up to 360. So if I want to find AC plus BD, I'm going to add these two and subtract from 180. Okay? So um, measure of AC, 
plus measure of BD is going to be the, the, the measure of the entire circle, which is 360, minus the other two I know, which is 104, plus 168. Okay? Now let's compute this with our calculators real quick. All right, so we have 360 minus 104 plus 168. And our answer is 88. Okay, so that's what we have for measure of, a angle, of uh, angle AC plus BD. So measure of angle AC plus measure of um, our BD equals 88 degrees. Is that the final answer? Notice we have 88 degrees here as an option, but is that right? Absolutely not. So we're asked to find the measure of BD. This is a distractor right here. We're not done. So how do we find BD though? We know what AC and BD are, but wait, since they're congruent as we determined earlier here, um, then, yeah, well, we determined that they're congruent here, then we can just replace one with the other since they're equivalent, right? So since these were congruent, we can say measure of angle BD plus measure of angle BD is equal to 88 because uh, measure of AC is congruent to measure of BD, so I can replace AC with BD since you're the same. So twice measure of angle BD is equal to 88. So what do I do to get BD? I'll just simply divide by 2, right? Because I'm adding BD to itself or I'm doubling it. So if I divide both sides by 2, that will give me what the measure of angle BD is because BD is exactly half of the combined measure of BD and AC. So we have measure of angle of arc BD equals 44 degrees. So our answer is option number two. All right, let's move on to the next question, question three. All right, let's take a look at question three. It says, as shown in the diagram below, CD is a median of triangle ABC. So what does that mean? What does the word median mean? What is the median of a, of a, of a triangle? Well, median is a segment that joins a vertex with the midpoint of the segment or side opposite the vertex, okay? So, if this is the med median, it's going to be connecting this vertex with the midpoint of the segment, okay? So, uh, if this is a midpoint, that tells me that this side is congruent to this side, all right? Median depends only, the only explicit definition here is it connects a vertex and the midpoint of the segment opposite um, opposite the vertex, okay? All right. Now, so which of the statement is true? AD is congruent to DB. AD is congruent to DB, absolutely, okay? Because since D is a midpoint, uh, since D is a midpoint, then we can rest assured that segment AD is going to be congruent to segment db okay let's look at the other ones it says ac is congruent to ad there's no mention of that here we do not know if these two sides are congruent and then three or four are automatically wrong because we do not know anything about angles when we're talking about medians median this has to do with the midpoint and the vertex okay so that's all we need so the answer is option number one all right now let's uh go ahead and take a look at question number four it says, uh, in the diagram below, on the which transformation is A prime B triangle A prime B prime C prime, the image of triangle ABC. So this right here is triangle ABC, and this is A prime C prime B prime. What happened here? Well, let's take a look at each point. We will consider what happened to each point, and then we'll be able to determine what, what's happening here. Okay? All right, so uh, let's start off by taking a look at A. A to A prime, what happened here? From A to A prime, you notice what happened? It's a reflection along the y-axis, all right? How about um, B to B prime? From B to B prime, there's also a reflection along the y-axis. How about C to C prime? C to C prime goes in that direction. As also a reflection along the y-axis. So if you're on the left, you go to the right. If you're on the right, you go to the left. So this transformation basically 
uh, is a reflection about the y-axis, okay? And how is that represented? Our, our reflection about the y-axis option number three is our correct answer, okay? So we don't need to strain our eyes too much by trying to figure out what's happening with the shape. We can just focus our attention on the vertices and they're more than enough to tell us their behavior or their uh, transformations are more than enough to tell us what's actually happening or what kind of reflection transformation is going on. All right, so we can clearly see that this is a reflection along the y-axis. All right, now let's move on to question number five. All right. So question five says, a, a, B is the diameter of a circle O, where, whose center has coordinate 6, 8. What are the coordinates of point B if the coordinates of, the coordinates of point A are 4, 2? Okay, so what we're going to do first, let's uh, go ahead and uh, sketch a circle. And then uh, we'll put in this information. Okay, so that goes our circle right there. Um, and <clears throat> the center is O, so let's mark the center. So it's cent well, let me draw the diameter first. It's easier for me to find what where the center is. So let's say that's the diameter, and that goes and that goes the center. Draw the center right here. It's not being drawn perfectly. Okay, it's just a sketch. So the center is O, and it has. We told that A B is the diameter. The center has coordinates 6, 8, and point A has coordinates 4, 2. So the question is, what is the coordinates of B, right, of point B? What are the coordinates of point B? So one thing you have to note is that since this is a diameter, it's a straight line, okay? And since uh, since it's a straight line, that means it's going to have the same slope for every point. The rise of a run for any, any set of, any pair of points on this line will be the same, okay? Now, since O is a center, the distance from A to O will be congruent to the distance from O to B. So the rise and the run from A to O will be identical, and O to B will be identical. All right, so the rise and the run from A to O will be exactly the same as the rise and the run from O to B because they're collinear and O is a midpoint. Okay, this segment right here is congruent to this segment. They're both the radii, uh, radii of the circle. All right. So, what is the rise and the run here? Let me sketch it for you so you can see exactly what's going on here. Um, from this point, so we have a rise, a certain rise, and a run takes us from point A and the extremity of the circle to the center. And then we have another rise and a run. So what I'm saying is that these two rise and runs must be exactly the same since we're going through from the one point to the center and then from the center to the other point on a straight line. All right, so what is the rise and the run? If we examine the coordinates, they tell us what the rise and the run are. If you're going from four to six, you remember your x-axis is side to side, your x-axis goes side to side, and your y-axis goes up and down. So if we run from four to six, what is the run there? From four to six, you're running plus two units. And then if you're rising from 2 to 8, what is your rise? How many units do you have to rise to go from 2 all the way to 8? You have to rise 6 units because 2 plus 6 is 8. And 4 plus 2 is 6. All right, so there goes my rise and the run. If I apply this exact rise and run on this second triangle right here, it will tell me what the coordinates of B are. Okay? So I'm just going to rise 6 as I did here, and I'm going to run 2. So what does that look like? I'm going to add... 6, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm going to add 2, remember, run is the x-axis, I'm going to add 2 to my 6, eight, uh, 6 plus 2 is 8, and then from the rise, I'm going to add 8 plus 6, which is 14, so my answer is 8 and 14, so there goes option number 3 as our correct answer, all right, so there you have it. All right, so let's take a look at another way of doing number five. If this drawing is a little bit too complicated for you, we can just uh, make a, uh, uh, orient them vertically. So we have four, two as the first point, and then we have six, eight. All right, and then we have the other set of points. So this is point A, and this is O, and this is B. 
All right, so the question is, what do you add here to go from four to six? From four to six, you add two. So guess what? To go from O to B, you're also gonna add two, two, okay? Because four plus two is six. And then from, for the Y coordinate, how do you go from two to eight? You add six. So what does that tell me? To determine the new Y, we also have to add six, two, okay? So what is six plus two? Eight. And what is 8 plus 6? 14. This is just another way of doing it. You just make line them up and then see how many units you're jumping by. And then just apply it to the preceding points to get the next point. And you get your final answer, which is option number 3. All right. So there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Now feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. And please post a comment to let me know what you think about this clip. Uh, more clips can be found on myglasserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.